I'm Ryan and you guys are watching RC Fun and Games again. Today we are going to build our second tarantula build with all the spare parts we've got lying around that we removed from our Traxxas TRX4M build. So, we are going to need for this build the base plate with all the links. We are going to need the axles, front and rear. We will also be using the new Injora 59mm shocks, what have the piggy and the weighted bottoms in brass. So that's going to be an interesting one to check out. They look really cool. We've got the gearbox over here with the original motor we're going to be using. It's got reduction gears, bearings and stainless steel shafts. We will also be fitting that to the tarantula buggy. And of course, the buggy body in red. We will also be running the brass rims from Injura and we'll be using their all-terrain 62 millimeter tires, guys. So, let's get stuck into this build. It's pretty much the same as the last one. We've got a couple of differences that we're gonna be doing, but pretty much it's the same thing as the last tarantula build, which is this one over here. It was an awesome build. It came out really good, and considering I basically only used all the parts I had left behind, it's made another awesome little RC car and it performs amazingly. Okay, let's start with the body. Light bar. The other pieces to assemble. And the body panels, 3M tape. And of course, all the hardware needed to do the installation. We will be needing for this build a 1.3 millimeter wrench and a 1.5 millimeter wrench. The screws we're gonna be using to assemble the body, they all come in one packet and they all look the same and they are the 1.3 millimeter screws. Okay, and as you guys can see, we've got it halfway completed. So now we are gonna move on by assembling the gearbox to the base plate, to the belly pan. Okay, so this is gonna go, if I'm not mistaken, this way around. Okay, those should be the rear links, this should be the front links, and the motor faces forward. So four screws to tie down the motor. We're going to be using the stainless steel set from Injura. Now we are going to need the 1.5 millimeter wrench.
Okay, now we are at the stage where we can actually fit the axles. So I'm gonna start by assembling the rear axle, then the front axle. Now, before we can move on any further, we need to grab the shocks. So, and these shocks are the new 59 millimeter shocks from Injura. These are the ones with the brass bottoms and the little piggy, which I think is just a false piggy, but it is a piggy. It looks awesome. So let's cut one of these packets open and let's see what they look like. Get all the hardware and a bunch of springs. Let's hope these springs are a little bit harder than the ones that come on the other 59 millimeter shocks. And here are the actual shots. And as you guys can see, once again, Injura has killed it, guys. It looks amazing. I know this hasn't got any function by the looks of it. It is sealed, but I don't think it's got any function. We'll soon see when we get the cap off. So let's get the spring off. The spring on this one is actually quite nice and soft. So definitely needs oil. Let's open it up. From what I can tell, the piggy is just for show. It doesn't really do anything. It's just for appearance, okay? It does look really amazing. So, let's get some oil into the shock. I'm gonna be using is this 200 CPS oil. It is a 19 WT. We could go for the other one I've got here, which is the 51 WT, but I think that is a bit too thick for the weight of these bodies. So I'm going to stick with the 19WT 200 CPS. Once you've added all the oil needed, just move the shaft up and down until all air bubbles have released. Make sure that all the little air bubbles in there have come out, as mine have. And now I'm going to put my cap on. On the instructions, they tell you to fully extend the shaft and tighten the cap. But I don't like doing that as it leaves a preload in the shock leaving the cars standing very high i don't like that look and i also don't like the performance from it so the way i like setting it up is pushing it up until almost it's to its maximum then i tighten the cap down excess oil will pour out of the hole tighten to finger tight wipe away the excess oil that's come out Okay, and like this, you end up with a negative, so with a droop setup, keeping your suspension low, but allowing for all the articulation just like normal. Okay, but instead of riding at a high height, it rides at a semi height as the shocks are pulling back in. Once you fit the spring back, of course, it will also want to go higher, but it still won't fully extend only under articulation. As you guys can see, it stays like that. You can reach maximum, but if you push it in, it stays there. So basically, it is not constantly pushing out, it's just dampening the motion when you go over bumps. Okay, that's my setup, that's how I like running them, and we're gonna give it a try on this tarantula bolt. So, let's get the next ones done. I'll do those off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we finally got all the ball joints fitted, it's ready to go on, so let's move on with this back axle. And like that, I've got the drive shaft in phase as the back one is in the same angle as that one. Make sure that the two lobes match up with each other and the following two lobes match up with each other. Now that I've got that done, I'm gonna move on to putting it on yet. All you gotta do is turn your axle a bit until you find the spot you need. Okay. 
and this was still the first generation of stainless steel drive shafts. People said you couldn't get them in phase. Well, I beg to differ because they both match up 100% exactly the same as the hardened black ones. Okay, now I know the front one I don't have as much luck. It's about two millimeters off from each other, but I don't see that being a big problem on a small, slow crawler like this, guys. Now, let's get the front axle on. servo doesn't hit anywhere so far looking really good now we need to put that drive shaft on once again guys I'm just gonna put a drop of shock oil in there just to keep it lubrified so it's not metal on metal as you guys can see this drive shaft is not a hundred percent in phase it's got a little bit of discrepancy between the two but as good as I can get it on this one the back one definitely is in phase I can see why they made the new drive shafts now, we are gonna stick this on. It's as good as it's gonna be. So, just gonna get it on there. Riding nice and low, I quite like that. Probably take all the preload off. Okay, I'm still gonna leave a little bit of preload on this one just to compensate for that torque twist and we'll adjust accordingly when we're out on the trail. We are gonna have to start thinking about putting all the body panels on, but before I do that, we've got electronics to fit. Okay, we are now moving on to electro electronics and we are gonna be using the 2.4 gigahertz radio from Injura. Let's just move this so you guys can see. So basically, it's the Injura controller that they sell, which is basically a six channel Dumbo receiver it gives you a really good distance and it also gives you a six channel receiver which is very handy for fitting lights and any other accessories winch you name it so it's one i go for and i like them they're always smooth they're always nice and they never let me down the only thing i've got to complain about is they do eat batteries faster than most but then you do get more range than most controllers so we're going to be installing this and we are going to be using the wpl 30 amp 2 3s capable ecu this is for brushed motors, and this is actually for brushed motors up to 370. So we are going to be running it. I'm already running it on this little tarantula on that side. It's got really nice modulation. I really like it, and I think it's extremely good for the price tag of 12 euros or whatever it is. It is really cheap, and it's definitely one to look for if you're looking for your own electronics for this vehicle. On the next build we're going to be doing, we are going to be using the new Injura combo they've come out with for the Traxxas TRX4M, which comes with the gearbox and a 370 motor. So I'll let you all know how that's gonna play out. And if you don't wanna miss that video, don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell, guys. It really helps my small little channel out. But for now, let's get these electronics fitted so that we can move on to the next stage and put the panels on the vehicle and of course, get the wheels done. So let's get this open and I'll show you guys what you're getting here. Okay, so this is what we get, guys. They also provide the plug for the motor. So I am gonna have to do some soldering. We're gonna remove that wire and we'll be fitting this one. And then, of course, you get your ECU. Very simple, it's wrapped up like that. And you know what, guys, it works really great. So I'm just gonna, this is for your battery. This is for your motor. Very simply, you get a switch. And of course, this plugs into channel two on your receiver. Now, let's get a little plastic plate made because we need to make like a little plastic plate that goes across here where the battery tray would go. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to use two spaces so I can clear the drive shaft. And like that, we can put the electronics down the bottom and I'm going to stick the battery in the back just like I did in my last one because I'm only running a tiny battery and it's, it climbs really good like that and you can access the battery really easy compared to sticking the battery in there. 
Now, I need to go and find a piece of plastic and make my tray. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I've made my little plate where I'll be putting my electronics. That's going to go over there. As you can see, it will be down there at the bottom. Let's get that screwed on. Okay, now that I've got my little plate in, I can put our electronics in. Okay, so we get the six channel controller, we get the six channel receiver and we also get this little accessory if you want to put it on the controller for your thumb. So that's also a nice little accessory actually. But let's get this guy fitted. Now I was thinking of sticking this to there so I don't have anything sitting up high. So let's take a piece and cut it and put it on there. plug the servo in. Okay, so number one is plugged in and now I believe number two is the ECU. Okay, now we've got all the electronics. I'm gonna have to start doing the soldering on the back of the engine. So I'm gonna remove the original cable from Traxxas and I'm gonna be fitting this little red plug. Okay, now that we've got the wiring sorted out on the motor, we can plug it together with the ECU. So let's get it through here. Okay, motor's plugged together. Now we need to sort out our wiring. So, okay, so let's get all the panels on. Once again, the hardware needed to fit it. We get our hood which apparently the V2 of the Tarantula is going to come out soon with a higher scoop, I believe, or a modified hood, so it can actually take off the market servos. We've now got all the panels on. It does look quite nice in red. Let's try and get this light bar on that we forgot all about.
and the battery I'll be using on this is a 500mAh 7.4 from a WPL which of course the battery fittings are perfect. Okay now that we've got the battery in it, I've got batteries in the controller, let's check out if it works and try and centralize this servo. Okay working okay works nicely so server can be tied up there it's nice and straight let's just make sure the trims are straight yep okay let's go for it turn it back on perfect going too far either perfect okay now throttle control nice okay everything seems to work perfectly fine guys now let's move on to the rims very importantly I forgot to check if this works on channel 3 oh yes works perfectly there you are on and off has a bit of a delay when you turn it off but there it goes okay so everything works perfectly fine okay so let's move on to the rims I'm only going to assemble one and then the rest I'll do off camera. We're going to be running these awesome tires from Enjura as well, but they're cool brass rims. I think these are 42 gram if I'm not mistaken, and these are the six spoke. Very nice. I'll leave all the details and all the parts I use from Enjura in the description of the video. And of course, all the other components came off the Traxxas TRX4M. The only thing I used that wasn't from this was the WPL electronics, okay? And I'll also leave a link to the, in the description. Okay, and as you can see, it's done. They look awesome. These tires sit on you really nicely. So they're nice and soft, feel really good. So I'm gonna assemble the rest and I'll be right back once I've got them all done. And there we are, the build is finally finished. Look how awesome it turned out. Just gonna show you guys around the vehicle quickly. Stickers make a huge difference to me. I am really addicted to stickers, I love stickers. But once again, Enduro has killed it. This buggy is awesome. I think they perform really well and they look amazing too. The only upgrades we've got on this vehicle is the reduction gears, bearings throughout. We've got the 59 millimeter shocks, the stainless steel drive shafts, and of course, the awesome 42 gram rims made out of brass from Enduro with their all-terrain tires. These are 62 millimeters and you know what? They have been performing really well. I'm impressed with these tires. So I thought I'll give it a chance against those over there. Besides that, guys, it's gone together really well. It's got some nice modulation, which I'll show you guys quickly on the table, yeah? So just gonna turn, just gonna turn everything on. As you guys can see, I put my little switch here. Easy to access. Got my battery in the back there and electronics down the bottom. Now, let's just check the modulation. Grab a tire. As you guys can see, nice slow modulation. I'm well impressed. You know what? It's easily as good as the original electronics. I've got no complaint there. And I've also put the light bar on channel number three. So like that, we can control it whenever we want. Turn it on and off. Steering works perfect. The only thing is the servo is a bit on the weak side, so I'm possibly going to be upgrading the servo, steering arm and knuckles on both rigs 
just to get that extra performance because these original servos are too weak. Besides that, it's been an awesome build and I definitely recommend if you've got some original components lying around, you know what, for the price, do it. It is an awesome, awesome little buggy. Even with the stock components with just some brass rims, it will perform really well and you will not be let down. So go and check it out at Injura, guys. It's an awesome little buggy. I want to say thank you for joining me on another video, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.